Hello, everyone. My name is Sanjay Chen. I'm from the Ohio State University. Our paper is Select Return Efficient Data Flow Tracking with Static Binary Rewriting. This is the joint work with Professor Zhi Xiangli and Professor Yin Chen Zhang from the Ohio State University. As you can see here, we try to improve the data flow tracking performance using static binary rewriting. So data flow tracking also has a name called dynamic attempt analysis. We can see here is an, a simple example, um, or C example. So here the program gets the system input from ARGC and ARGV. Then the system input ARGV is copied to the buffer. And then I line file with the program returns. So this one has a buffer overflow vulnerability. And we can see on the right is the stack, uh, stack of this program. So if the system input is larger than 16 bytes, then the buffer will overflow and overwritten the return address on the stack as the control flow is hijacked. This kind of control flow hijack attack can be detected by the ten dynamic turn analysis. The dynamic turn analysis has three key elements. The first one is a turn source, the second one is turn propagation, and the third one is turn sync. This is the turn source is where the malicious data comes into the program. Here is the ARGC and the ARGVs from the system input. And the turn propagation is how the turn is propagated. And turn sync is the, where the malicious attacker is interested in. So here is the line file where the return instruction, the attacker tries to control the control flow. So the dynamic tent analysis uh, is performed in this detail. We can see the implementation in this slide. So on the left is the, the program logic and on the right is the tent logic. So the program logic uh, first moves the uh, memory cell to the rest of the EAS. And second instruction will move the ES to another memory cell. Accordingly, the, uh, the Tinta logic will execute as a runtime and update the shadow memory and shadow register accordingly. So for example, before the execution of the first instruction, one memory cell in the shadow memory is tinted. And after executing the first instruction, the tent is propagated from the memory cell in the shared memory to the rest of EAX. And then after executing the second instruction, the tent is propagated from the EAX to another memory cell in the shared memory. This is how the dynamic tent analysis is implemented. So however, dynamic tent analysis often have a high performance overhead, which stop it from uh, a widely deployed in real world computer systems. For example, a framework called libdft will have four times slowdown for gzip comparison of file. We try to investigate why uh, tent analysis is slow. For the first reason is dynamic instrumentation. So uh, the dynamic tent analysis is usually done by using a tool called the Intel PIN, which instruments the tent logic at, uh, dynamically at runtime. You can see here uh, the Intel PIN architecture in the figure. So in order to perform the instrumentation at runtime, the Intel PIN needs instrumentation APIs, JIT compilers, and emulation units, which all adds additional overhead to the tent analysis. So our first insight is to statically uh, rewrite the binary uh, to instrument the tent logic using static binary writing instead of dynamically instrument at runtime. The second reason is over instrumentation. So current tool will over instrument it, uh, use instrument the tent logic for every instruction. However, we can see here in the example, the test instruction, test ES, ES. The test will perform a logical and of the two registers and will update the status flag only. It will not uh, propagate tent. And, and our second insight is to instrument the tent logic selectively using value set analysis instead of instrumenting every instruction. So based on those two uh, insights, we try to perform a static and selective instrumentation. So this one is equivalent to, to perform a static tent analysis. The first research question is to how to perform this selective tent analysis. The second research question is how to reason about uh, aliasing relations in binary code, because we need to know whether a pointer points to the shadow memory. The shadow memory is a static shadow memory, which is just like the runtime shadow memory. So we try to use value set analysis to reason about the aliasing relationship at compile time. So value set analysis is a static binary uh, analysis technique which will over approximate the set of possible values at data objects at each binary point, at each program point.
So it will separate the memory region into three disjoint regions, stack, heap, and global, just like the runtime memory layout. And the value set analysis will compute the region and value set first based on the interesting semantics. We can see for the two examples here, the ESP plus four from this semantics, the value set analysis will assign this variable to stack region. And the second one is a global uh, address. So the value set analysis from this semantics will assign this variable to the global region. When the value set analysis cannot determine uh, the region based on the semantics, it will perform a, a data flow analysis. For example, here at the bottom, we have two instructions. So from the data flow, we can uh, we know that uh, this, for the second instruction, the EX is containing a global variable. So the value set analysis will assign the global region to the EX as a second instruction. This is how the value set analysis is performed. So back to our original question, how to perform this static uh, tent analysis. A straw man approach is to identify a mass tented instruction set IT using value set analysis. This is, this is the master analysis. However, the value set analysis will lose precision due to incomplete CFG and anything. So our approach is to conservatively identify a mass not tented instruction set IU using value set analysis and tent the others. So this is the rationale why we do a mass melt analysis. So we can see the square box is all the instructions in the program. The solid circle is the ideally tented instruction. We first try to identify the uh, dashed circle inside the solid circle, which is the mass tented instruction side. This is the master analysis. However, since we have an precision issue, so we try to make this size small, we perform a conservative master analysis. This one will have under tent problem. Then we try to uh, figure out the opposite side which is the top red half, which is the must not tented instruction set. This one also has an imprecision issue. So we try to make this set small. This one is a conservative must not tented analysis. This one will over tending the instructions in the program. That means we only, only when we know that instruction will never be tented, we put it inside this set and then we tend the others. This one will over the uh, instructions and make our approach sound. So we have a full, uh, a full identification policies and uh, we use those identification policy to make, to make sure which one should be put and which one should not be put in our set. So accordingly, we have uh, a full inference rules, just the one-on-one -on -one mapping to the, uh, to the identification policy. So first one is the unreachable rule. That means if instruction I is not reachable uh, from many 10 sources, we remove this one from our mass authentic instruction set. The second one is unknown op code, uh, operand rule. That means some operand is unknown, then we remove this instruction from our mass authentic instruction set. The third one is the attended operand rule. This one focuses on the operand. If all the operand of the instruction I is a subset, the value set is a subset of our shadow memory. The shadow memory maintains all the value sets that will never be tented. We add this instruction to our uh, must not tented instruction set IU. The last one is the non propagate opcode rule. This one focuses on the opcode. That means if this opcode does not change any operand value set, then this one will not propagate tented. We will add this instruction to our must not tented instruction set. And there are also several inf uh, auxiliary inference rules. Using those rules, we try to perform a theorem that our mass not tented analysis is sound except for the precision loss due to the imprecise CFG and value set analysis result. So we prove this theorem by induction. The first iteration, uh, we will, uh, our mass not tented instruction set is empty. That means we will over tend all the instructions. This one, for this one, our mass not tented analysis is sound. The second step, uh, try to prove for the case iteration, our mass not tented analysis sound, and then for the K plus one iteration, it also holds. This one is case by case using our inference rules and you, find, you can find the details in our paper. This is the design of our uh, uh, tool. The first three uh, module is the selective binary, uh, binary tent analysis, which will identify which one need to be tented and which one will not be uh, instrumented. And the last module will rewrite the binary and generate the rewritten binary. 
we uh, evaluate our uh, tool against the, the state of the R to lib DFT. We have 1.7 times faster. So, uh, and then we also evaluate our tool for the functionality. We are at the nine vulnerabilities and we can identify all those nine vulnerabilities just like a libdrt which shows our this uh, practical tool can be used in real world bug detection. This is the related work of our tool. And uh, our tool is also available on GitHub and uh, you can find our email here. Thank you.